I hope he just gets what he deserves, I guess I could say. You know, his actions, There's there should be consequences. I mean, I don't want to say, oh, I want him to go to jail or this or that. I mean, I just hope he gets the proper punishment that goes hand in hand with his actions. That's Colin Fitz, the kid who was on that viral video that cost uh, Sergeant Sean Glanz his job with the Saratoga County Sheriff's Department. We're joined by uh, legal analyst Chaz Farcher from Martin Hunting Mazzotti. Chaz, how are you? Good. How you doing, Chuck? Doing well. Hey, so let's start at the beginning. This kid was within his rights, right? Explain why uh, he uh, they couldn't search his car without his consent. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in New York State and this country, you have the right to be protected against unlawful searches and seizures. Um, you know, so if you're stopped by the police or, you know, in this instance, whether you're in your vehicle or outside your vehicle, you don't have to consent to a search. You know, many, I'd say the majority of searches that are conducted are done so upon consent. Many people think that if the cops ask to search your your car, your house, whatever it is, you know, you have to say yes, and that's just not true. Without probable cause, the police can't search your vehicle, they can't search your home, or without a search warrant or, or a number of other things. But if you don't have any of those, you know, then you have the right to be protected from those searches. So here you had two guys walking through a parking lot whose car happened to be nearby. Um, you know, the, the sheriff wanted to search the vehicle, and they said no, and there's no probable cause that a crime was committed. There's no search warrant, so they're within their rights. Now, what about if they want to search your pockets or they want to search you? Well, that's different. That's something called a Terry stop. If there is reasonable suspicion, some kind of suspicion to believe that a crime has been committed, so they can't just stop everybody and anybody on the street and pat you down and make sure you're not carrying anything. But if you're in an area, you know, you know, I guess the argument can be made if you're wearing dark clothes and possibly carrying burglar tools or something like that, there's a reasonable suspicion that a crime's been committed. Then they can pat you down and ask you for basic identifying information. The, the, the difference there is that's for officer safety. You could be concealing a weapon or something that could be dangerous to the officer, but they still can't search your locked vehicle 10, 20 feet from you. So Chuck and I were talking about this before. I mean, if you've got nothing to hide, what's the problem with letting an officer search your car? Would you recommend people say, you know what, go ahead? Or would you recommend they say, they say no? Well, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those catch-22s. You're right. That's always the question. If you got nothing to hide, then why, why wouldn't you consent? And the, the answer, I suppose, is because you don't have to. You know, in, in this state, in this country, you have the right not to be subjected to those types of searches. And I guess it's a slippery slope argument. If you start saying that now, then why not let every officer search your house when they drive by? Because mm-hmm. if you got nothing to hide, then what's the big deal? And I guess the answer is, you know, when this country, when this Constitution was written, we decided we weren't going to be subjected to that. And unless there's probable cause that a crime was committed, you know, our citizens don't have to. And I guess that's the reason. Two other super quick questions because we're, we're just about out of time. They had like a 22, a long gun in the back seat. That's not probable cause, right? So, I mean, just because you have a that in the back seat is no reason to search. No, well, you know, probable cause, it, plain, something in plain view can be probable cause, but it would have to be some type of criminal paraphernalia. Uh, you know, and it's perfectly legal to own a 22 long gun. If it had yeah. been a pistol, he could have asked to see their pistol permit, but if it's a 22 long gun, you know, Unless there's some probable cause that it's a loaded firearm in a vehicle, for instance, somebody called in and said this guy's carrying a loaded gun, you know, then that that can be a crime having a loaded firearm in a car. But without some indication that that was out there, just by virtue of having a 22 in the back of the car does not provide probable no, cause I, to search the vehicle. I think what's <clears throat> excuse me, I think what saved these guys was that they recorded what happened, and so it's not no longer his word against the sergeant's word. So, you know, is there an issue with recording the the traffic stop or an incident like that? Well, you know, there have been a lot of people who have been pushing for recording devices, not just in all patrol cars, but also like GoPro cameras on all police officers, because the argument is out there that these types of incidents happen much more frequently than we'd like to admit. At the same time, it's, you know, it's also very easy to Monday morning quarterback a situation that's a tough job, and there are a lot of great men and women who do it, so you, you, you hate to overgeneralize the situation. But I think, you know, fortunately, you're right for Mr. Fitch's benefit. The, the incident was recorded, and certainly it supports, you know, his version of events. So it's certainly legal to film the cop, though. Just make sure that, I mean, you want to make sure the cop knows you're reaching for your phone, not for something else in the dark or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly <laughs> correct. Be careful when you're pulling a dark metallic object out of your pocket at night. Chess, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Our legal analyst, Chess Farcher from Martin Hunting Mazzotti.